Hello munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie. Welcome back to the channel and to a surrender intake story. Here at the rescue, we take in hamsters, gerbils, and mice. Today's intake story is a surrender one. So we have two different types where we go out and rescue. And then there's those that will say, hey, can you take in this animal? We do a case by case, evaluate why this person is surrendering and then take them in. And in this case, it was a senior boy named Clementine. This actually was an intake that happened months ago but now I wish to discuss and to talk about it. So let's begin. Clementine, male Syrian hamster, almost two years old, had for under two years. Originally from Petco, because I like to know where the animal has originally come from, if it was like an accidental litter from a previous rehome, that way I understand this hamster has been passed off from this person to this person to this person. And I do wanna make a note too here that it does discourage me as someone who takes in and rescues these guys when I hear that people who know about the channel went out and bought an animal anyways, rather than to think, you know, a rescue like me and just asking and inquiring to adopt from us and other rescues that we're partnered with around here. It's not just me that has hamsters. I've partnered with uh, several others in this area. It really does make us upset when we are only considered an option at the last resort, which is like the dumping ground of like, oh, we're just gonna hand off this animal to you rather than to think in the first place of getting an animal from you. I don't want that. That is so hard on us. Mentally, I've been going through hell this year and I want you guys to understand why I advocate so much because there's nothing wrong with these guys. Clementine is adorable. Speaking of which, he was awake. He's one of those hamsters that just unfortunately has a weird sleep schedule now because he's so old. He will come out when he, feels like it and he will mostly be inside his burrow. He is two years old now since we've had him for a few months and they estimate that he was under two years, but he definitely looks and feels too. He is a very chonker boy. He's a very easy to handle boy. He does have eye crusties, which is completely fine. Just take a warm Q-tip to his eyes and they'll open right back up. No need to go to the vets unless there was issues like you saw that maybe he was blind, kind of a cloudy eyes, his water discharge in his eyes is not clear, but rather uh, has a coloration to it. Cause crusty eyes doesn't need to be like immediate vet attention unless it is a severe case. But he's a long hair Syrian hamster, you can tell. At one point he had a very beautiful long coat, very beautiful. And he's just a very well-mannered little guy. It's been a while since I've actually showed you guys hamsters in the video, just because we have a lot of new intakes and they're just not as used to being handled. But for him, here he is. His owner has been checking up on him. Look at this little boy. And these guys, they can move pretty quickly too, especially when they're younger. But for him, he's just taking his time. It looks like he's licking my bed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there you go, boy but I don't think that's it. Ow, 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 oh, oh boy. Oh, you bit. Okay, well, this is him saying, I would like to be placed down now. So I'm gonna go put him away, but ow, that kind of hurt. Whew. So he didn't break skin at all. He was just, that was just a warning of he's agitated. The thing is, is that I was letting him explore, but I'm just gonna leave him be and discuss about what else he came with. I did note upon intake, even though they had a preview 528 cage for Clementine, they have an eight inch wheel for him. This is dwarf size. This is not Syrian hamster size. And even Night Angel on Amazon will state Syrians 10 inches and above. So this is incorrect. They probably purchased the wrong one thinking it was the right one and they just went with it. But he is a very long and big boy. He should not be running on this. So that's the one thing. By the way, you can also peel this off. So this right here should be clear. You can go ahead and peel it. And also I do want to note that there was tape on the bottom of this before I was gonna go and peel this off. There's tape. I don't understand it. And if they were to get under here, he is a long hair seer and hamster. Could have been possible that he could have got stuck. So don't tape or put tape inside any of your enclosures because that's not good material for them to get a hold of or they could get stuck on it. And the reason for rehoming was because they downsized to a smaller home. I don't know if it's an apartment. I just noted that it was downsized to a smaller home and cannot have a hamster in the same room as a cat. Because preview 520 cages are wire enclosures. I would not recommend keeping a cat with a wire enclosure for a small animal. It's just, you could have accidents just waiting to happen. A tank is a lot more stable and secure. Plus you can add tank latches to it. So it hooks 
in so the cat can't just like pry open a metal lid, which I have seen them do. Plus hamsters can push up on metal lids too. So it's a good idea if you have high amounts of bedding all the way up towards the lid to get metal latches, hooks, whatever. The other downside that I didn't like that I'll just note is that this is the wood shavings log. This one is from PetSmart and this does have even though it has Timothy hay in it, it does still have wood shavings in it. Don't recommend, it's already been partially chewed by him. They don't eat wood. In the preview 528 that we did get, he did get a very big chamber. It was, I believe the night angel chamber or one that mimics a night angel chamber. And he had a lot of bedding. It was mainly paper, which is good because he's a long hair seeking hamster. Some paper does get trapped in the hair, but others not so much, but we don't like to use Aspen's so much because that that seems to get trapped very easily. It's very lightweight and it has ridges. So that's why we like using paper or dense paper bedding. And I also noticed, which is a very genius idea, um, but this also has tape on it. It's both good and bad at the same time. But again, don't, don't have any sort of cardboard in here that has ink because ink can be toxic. So if they start chewing it and they get it in their mouths, that could basically poison them. So don't do that. And also, like I said, tape but these were around the wire enclosures so it discourages them from chewing on the wire itself when you have them in and it also increases the amount of bedding you can have inside of there which is genius i like that so if you want more than five to six inches of bedding inside of a preview just line some more wire with cardboard i assume this might be a travel carrier however it is possible that maybe Clementine was in this. It has been a couple years since the Tiny Tales line came out and there's still people buying it, even though there's videos online about why it's bad. I still get comments online saying, no, you're, you're over-exaggerating. I am one of many who literally tells people this is wrong. Ontario Hamster Club, California Hamster Association, they will tell you these cages are wrong. There is petitions online. There's Victoria Rachel, for goodness sakes. You guys love her, I know you do, because if you like her, you like me too. She's fantastic. There is many, many cool people that will tell you that these are not suitable enclosures and that we are not exaggerating. I think the whole thing about Munchie being exaggerating is because I produce a lot of high energy in your face video content where to those people, they find that annoying, so that's why they always say exaggerating. It's really not exaggerating. If I'm exaggerating, your animal in the wild has a two mile territory and they travel five to 10 miles a night. Am I exaggerating now? Can you hear me clearly? So it's possible that this was what Clementine was in originally or she just bought it because it's a good travel carrier. Smaller simplistic ones is great and oh no, I see errors already. Ugh, okay. <laughs> I actually did not take a look inside of here. I've actually kept a lot of our donated items and just put sticky notes on them saying, I'll get to them a different time. And this time is now, thanks to science. Anyways, lavender bedding. Please never use scented bedding. This overwhelming to your hamster that has to have their small nose be this close to it. No apple, no lavender, even though those are natural scents, too much of it, too strong, can confuse, can irritate. Don't do it, just regular bedding. This is your benefit, not your hamster's benefit. And if you don't wanna smell ammonia, put in more bedding and make sure that they have a wide enough space. And for Syrian hamsters, they go into a corner. You can easily see the corner, especially for white bedding like this because it turns yellow. Each week, just scoop it out, put new bedding in the corner. You don't smell a thing. It's harder, however, when trying to change out sand baths. If you use sand baths for your Syrian hamsters, you don't necessarily need, it's a good enrichment. Dwarf hamsters absolutely need sand inside their enclosures. But Syrian hamsters, they can bathe themselves just fine without using it. It's an enrichment item for Syrians, but it's also a great potty box after they're done rolling around in it for the first time. So for Syrian hamsters, if you use a sand bath, you're gonna be having to change that thing out like every single other day. It is insane. And some sands are not good when it comes to absorbing ammonia. So uh, keep that in mind, you might be smelling that a whole lot more rather than just letting them pee in something that is supposed to absorb ammonia and keep the ammonia smells down. We also have banana chips here. 
This doesn't have too much sugar in it, but this is just like a one-time treat. This is organic, so that's fine. And we got the mealworms right here. Now, this is a hit and miss when it comes to feeding for my Syrian hamsters, or just hamsters in general. Dwarf hamsters and mice love the dried ones. Syrians, not so much. They do tend to like the live versions of mealworms. This bag can be used up until September uh, 2022. So less than four months. Another thing that I don't like is when people put food inside containers because it could be contaminated. There could be potential to spread stuff like bugs, but I can tell what this food is. That's another thing. It's just, I don't know what's in it if it's not labeled, but it does look like there is the Higgins Sunburst inside of here because we did not receive a bag of Higgins Sunburst, but Oh yes, we did. We kind of did. It's still partially in here. There is also other food mixed in here. There looks like there is some of the dried flour in here, but the thing is, is that I don't know what that is. This, I don't give cloth to Syrian hamsters. Reason why is because they could chew it and the cloth that's inside of here is more than likely cotton, synthetic cotton. And these could be sold on Amazon. I think this one might've been from Amazon. And I just wouldn't risk it. Plus you would have to wash this. This could be okay for guinea pigs. However, it's very small. Actually, no, guinea pig size. Yeah, it's probably guinea pig size. But at the same time, you don't want to put this inside of hamsters because they will rip it apart, try to forage it. If it is synthetic, it is not good for them. There's just like a little plastic bowl in here and that's about it. And the preview that was donated is being used still by Clementine because Clementine's still here. Like I said, Rescue's not doing so well when it comes to trying to get these guys adopted out. It's been really hard and I don't want to be discouraged in this video, but oh my gosh, I have gone through so much mental crisis in the last couple months and my health has not been so great that it just, it, it's very overwhelming and I feel very much alone at some times, but there are people out there that do care. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. I don't like to show you how much I struggle sometimes, but these guys matter to me and sometimes I feel like just quitting and I just want to keep holding out because I feel like there's potential to grow and to educate and to do what I do. So thank you for being a part of this. So if you like the video, hit like, shows your support, YouTube algorithm comment. That way we can still stay in the flojo of the mojo. And if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family, learn more about us, please join. <laughs> it's like I have a cult going on here. Come to the dark side. Maybe this is why I'm wearing Maleficent shirt. See you guys, bye.